I can do to try to better him. That's all I'm trying to do. That's good. <sighs> Today, we're just focusing on shoulders and upper body. So we're ready for 12 rounds. You like me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love me at the end. Stay right there. Two. Yo, solo me estoy aquí porque quiero ser campeón del mundo. Y cuando decidí alejarme de mis hijos y de mi esposo, eh, ya no me importa nada. Que hay que levantarse y ir a entrenar. No pregunto qué toca, no pregunto nada. Hay que correr, hay que correr. My job is just to get him healthy and to get. I gotta be honest with you. I didn't like the episode. You know, I've covered every single episode of PBC Fight Camp. It is the the made for regular TV TV PG or TV PG thirteen, you know, um, version of HBO twenty four seven. You know, it's not. Let me stop saying HBO twenty four seven. It's you know a docu series building up toward Wilder Ortiz too. They're going to be four episodes. The first episode, I forgot what date it was, premiered just a few days ago. It was on my DVR, but because of the uh, World Series, things were tape delayed. So basically, my DVR, I only had 18 minutes of it. So now, if you want to watch it, it is on the Fox. No, it's not on the Fox Sports Go app yet. They have PBC Countdown, Brian Castano versus Wale Amotoso. That's the PBC on Fox. Well, anyway, we're going to talk. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. I cover every single major fight live. And, you know, how many days is it now? About, what, uh, 25 days away from Wilder versus Ortiz 2? PBC on Fox Pay-Per-View, $74.99. So, I look at it like this, right? It's the year of upsets, man. Luis Ortiz has, like, you know, a real solid chance. Even though, you know, I think he, like, really... Like, I think he, like, really, on some real shit, on some real shit, I think Luis Ortiz, like, for real, for real, 48. Because, you know, them Cubans, man, and I'm not trying to be racisms and shit or a bigot. I'm just saying the real shit. Once they get on that boat to come over here, they can be whatever age they want. So Luis Ortiz probably got off the boat whenever he got over here and probably like, yo, how old is you? He probably was like, I'm 20 motherfucking too. When he was like fucking 34 for real, for real. Like, they like, like, motherfucker, you like, yeah, motherfucker, all right. They probably like, all right, you motherfucker, 22 then. You know? We don't really know. You can, you get a whole new social security card and all that shit. Birth certificate, all brand spanking new. You know, you get that baby credit. You know, that, that brand new credit. You know, so I look at it like this. We're going to pause. I'm going to get you some clips. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. And, you know, I'm going to rate the episode a 6 of 10 because I'm trying to figure out, like, for movies, like, you know how they have, like, a storyboard? And, yes, it's called PBC Fight Camp. And it's, it's supposed to focus on the camp of the fighters. But, you know, like, show me some shit, right? But, anyway, I'm going to play some clips for you. Um, I'm going to be here reviewing every single episode. I'm going to be doing a preview of the next episode where we're going to talk about predictions and talk about the undercard. So, bear with me. I'm T Street Controversial with FightView360.com. Please subscribe. So, oh, you're going to see some jump cuts. So. I love this sport so much, I just want to put my all into it. Because it's going to be one day that I'm going to say, this is my last fight, guys. Keep telling people, I'm not going to be in this sport long. Because it's a crazy feeling to have so much power. It's like a blessing and a curse. But the power, it's not like being hit by a human being. There's a whole different level of blunt impact trauma. It's like a car wreck. It's just getting too ridiculous now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I throw punches and I literally hurt myself because there's so much power up in it. He wants to go to his right. He's got he's to go through a landmine to get there. Beautiful. Very nice. That is true. And you know, he had those two hand surgeries, right? He got that shit, that bionic shit up in there now. Well, the, 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 the right hand. And, you know, like right now, who would have thought three years ago that Deontay Wilder would be like our most like you can you can rely on that if he touches you you're gonna get knocked the fuck out who would have thought like right now 
uh, you know, like really outside of Andy Ruiz because of the belts, but is Deontay Wilder like the number one heavyweight? Now, don't get me wrong. I can't say it because I had him losing to Tyson Fury, even with the two knockdowns. You know, we went through that whole saga, video after video, fucking slowing down the footage and shit. And you see, I got the tech. We were slowing down the motherfucking CSI and that shit. 41 and 0 with one draw, 40 KOs. In my opinion, he should be 41 and one, but hey, you know, Tyson Fury's fighting in WWE Crown Jewel, by the way. I'm going to do my best to get you some highlights of that. You know, them motherfucking WWE, they don't fuck around with their fucking highlights. But we're going to try to get you some. So I'm going to be I'm not watching the fucking pay-per-view, but I am going to watch the uh, the Tyson Fury fight match, whatever you want to call it. So he's 34 years old now, man, you know. And right now, looking at the top of the uh, the heavyweight division, WBC champion Deontay Wilder, and of course the W the other three belts belong to Andy Ruiz, who is fighting Anthony Joshua in less than forty days. Ah, shit, in less than forty days. So that right there is really going to determine the future of the division because let's say, for example, Deontay Wilder beats uh, Luis Ortiz. And we're we're going to talk about in, in, in my next video how Luis Ortiz has a great chance to beat Deontay Wilder. But let's say if Deontay Wilder does win, who does he fight next? If Andy Ruiz wins, I think he fights him. Dylan White is still the mandatory. And when it comes to the Tyson Fury thing... I'm still, you know, it's supposed to be Tyson Fury in February. But if Andy Ruiz were to win, would they try to wiggle? Well, the contracts are supposed to be signed. And I was going to say that if Andy Ruiz were to win, would they try to wiggle out of the Tyson Fury fight to try to get those belts? And then the PBC just don't recognize the WBO. So from Andy Ruiz's side and from Joshua's side, is. <gasps> It seems as though they may drop that WBO title and let Usyk and maybe whoever fight for it. It seems as though nobody, you know, they're going to do their best to not have Usyk in the mix for quite some time. And then with the politics involved in that. But the heavyweight division is on fire, man. And, you know, Deontay Wilder in a fight like this, you know, for example, just in, 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 in a few days, I got, I got Canelo losing to Kovalev. And I'm going to be here live watching the fight. So we're going to be doing a live, real my first ever live fight, real-time stream. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to show the fight, you dumb fucks. who are going to be like, well, why won't you just stream the fight on your channels? Niggas be dickheads, man. But what I will be able to do is, in between rounds, we'll be able to do commentary. And I'll be able to show you brief highlights via fair use and, you know, some, 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 some small connections. You know, thank you. Shout out to The Zone. But anyway, let's get to some more clips of the episode. And right now, like I said, you know, here's the thing. Like, I was wondering, like, what were they going for? You know, I understand that they didn't want to bring up Tyson Fury, you know, whole promotional and all that type of shit. I understand that they wanted to focus on Luis Ortiz. But I, I like that they're focusing on Luis Ortiz, that we're getting, like, you know, some nice glimpses, you know, and then not you know, looks into his life. And he looks in phenomenal shape, by the way, for his age. But I still have questions, you know, on like, okay, well, what are they going to give us? Now, we got a media call coming up with Deontay Wilder soon and Luis Ortiz, maybe the week before the fight. And Deontay Wilder right now is pound for pound king of the media calls. Even though he be talking that crazy shit, he start getting all sinisterly biblical on you, you know, like that shit still be gold. Um, but he's been pretty tame, you know, especially with what's been going on as of late in the boxing. He's not talking about killing nobody. He really did try to kill Dominic Brazil. Dominic Brazil shut his whole life down. But anyway, let me shut up. We'll be right back. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Blessing and the curse. And the power of not like being hit by a human being. being. There's a whole different level of blunt impact trauma. It's like a car wreck. It's just getting too ridiculous now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I throw punches and I literally hurt myself because there's so much power up in it. You know, I spoke a little too soon, you know, but he's sticking to his guns, even though it's distasteful to say it is fucked up. 
But, you know, you know, and you know, y'all know I got a bloodlust, but I never want to see a fighter get hurt or die in the ring. Fuck that. And I've, been, and I've covered numerous fights now, unfortunately, where I'm sitting there watching that shit happen real time. And that shit ain't cool. And even if you don't know the boxers or the fighters personally, like to see that shit and think like, damn, this is the sport I motherfucking covered. That shit ain't cool, man. But, you know, I'm going to leave it up to you fans. But he did, you know, I have to backtrack because for somehow I missed this part right here. The better, the better I get, I'm really gonna hurt somebody in this game. I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a hurt, I'm a really gonna, gonna get a man out of here. Tease, who defected from Cuba in 2009, he was fighting for freedom. Yo me fui de Cuba en una lancha hasta México, y de México eh, vine por los estados hasta llegar a la frontera. Mi mente, aparte de, de lo atormentada que está. Sabe, por el extraño a mis hijos, a mi esposa, estoy lejos de casa. Eh, pongo un, po un poco de música para concentrarme en mi trabajo. Sí, what I tell you, man. De mí. Te los extraño a mi esposa. No, all jokes aside, getting over here is a struggle for them. And I gotta be honest, like, loser tease is dangerous, man. Left handed. You know, he has the experience of the first fight to, to, you know, try to capitalize off of mistakes. And overall, he is still a better overall fighter boxer than um, Deontay Wilder. But Deontay Wilder, he touched you, you go down, and he already touched him. And he's already shown us in the rematch, even though Bermain Stavern is on nowhere near the level of Luis Ortiz. You know, Luis Ortiz got a chance, man. You know, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. But the last clip we're going to show you of um, uh, is a recap of the first fight that they did on this episode. So right now, looking at Luis Ortiz's resume, 31 and 1 with 26 KOs. He's listed at 40 years old. I remember, did I ever tell you the story how I think I was at his 38th birthday party? Was his 36 or on paper 30? I think it was his 38th. When did he turn 40? March 41. So it was three years. Was it three years ago? It had to be longer than that. I think it was his 36th birthday party. It could have been 38th, what they listed it as. Anyway, it was in this fancy schmancy uh, restaurant. It was the press conference, the first press conference of him signing or press media event of him signing with Al Heyman. And it was in Joe Gallagher's Steakhouse, some fancy steakhouse in New York that has some good ass cheesecake and shit. So anyway, um, I'm looking at him as I'm interviewing and I'm looking like, man, this motherfucker ain't no motherfucking 38. I'm looking, I'm looking, and you know what I start looking at, no homo? I'm looking at, like, his skin and, like, how smooth it is. Like, he, like, he really, like, go to the grain. Like, he got that, them good razors to make sure that the stubble, you know, you never see him stubble the beard. They don't want you to see the gray. They don't want you to see the gray in that shit. And that shit, that, that, like, he tried that shit, the, 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 that young kid's cut he got. You ain't fooling me, man. You ain't fooling me. I like Luis Ortiz, though. I like Luis Ortiz, though. You know, and I'm happy, like, nobody's talking about, like, yo, he getting a pay-per-view shot. Like, I don't hate me be really taking care of his guys, you know? Like, he's on, like, a national scale. By the way, they're saying that this did um, um, uh, 2.2 million um, households or views or something like that on TV ratings. But that don't mean shit. It's supposed to. I'm not celebrating fucking what you're supposed to be doing on fucking free TV. When, they, when they're marketing you around the Super Bowl, in regards to the pay-per-view, I think the pay-per-view is going to do better than um, than uh, Spence versus Porter because of it's, it's heavyweight. You know? I don't know, man. This month is beautiful, though. Well, it's not it's not November yet, but still. You know, um, what's today's date? 29th? Today's the 29th? Tomorrow, what's today's date? Today is the 29th. 11, 27, and 29th. All right. So, I'll be back. Last break. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. A mi madre, mi hermana, sí, pienso en todo. Pero bueno, este es mi sacrificio. De mi destino. The glitz and glamour of Las Vegas. So, as Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz prepare for their rematch, they hearken back to their first bout in March of 2018. Wilder has never faced an exam, but the one is supposed to be him tonight. Evenly 
unmatched through the first four rounds. In round five, Wilder began to settle in, and so did his lethal and famous right hand. And there's the right hand! Ortiz is... You see what happened right there? See, I've talked about it many times. You can't let Wilder do that charge up shit. You see how he cocked it back once he charges up and like fucking, fucking like get that energy from the earth, that windmill shit. You can't stop it, man. You can't stop it. Unfortunately, I would love to show you um, um, clips of this right now, but but not Showtime, but CBS. They be on like who owns Showtime, you know, the, the, the big brother of Showtime. You know, they be on some weirdo shit, man, fucking claiming my videos and shit. That shit be fucking weird, you know, and they don't never fucking respond to my fucking emails. It triggers the fuck out of me. I knew he was hurt, and I wanted to show him my power. I wanted to show him that. If you think you're tough, I'm tougher. If you think you're strong, I'm stronger. But in round seven, the world and Wilder were shown the talent of Luis Ortiz. Cuando supe que estaba lastimado, salí a a trabajar, a hacer lo que mejor que se hacer, que es tirar piñazo y tirar piñazo y tirar piñazo hasta que se me acabara la gasolina. I made the mistake to stay close to him, and I was pawing my jab at him. And that's when he came with his left hand, and that's that's when he bossed me. You know, I was never hurt. Time he did it, you know, but I was well aware of what was going on. When the tent round, I started coming back on. I started seeing openings. The right hand was landing continuously. So I started throwing it even more consistent. Right cross, loving left hand by her. Wilder, down goes Ortiz for the second time of the fight. When he got back up, I came with the uppercut to end it. A big right hand, shakes Ortiz, down he goes, looks, Dave Fields, there, the uppercut, this one is over. Deontay Wilder, he came, he saw, he conquered. That shit ain't no joke. That shit ain't no joke. So let's get to it. The next episode. When are we coming on? Next episode. Um, this week. This is actually the Fox Sports Go app. The biggest issue I have is for like, why is this stuff? Why is the episode not on here yet? You know. But anyway, um, this is the upcoming stuff. So let's see. What is what is next? When is next? When is next? I believe it's Sunday. Here it is. PBC face to face. Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Saturday, November the second. Just before Canelo versus uh um um uh, Kovalev. Me, I'm gonna be covering it sometime in the middle of the night. Too busy that night or that Sunday. And then Fight Camp Episode 2 comes on. So basically you got PBC face to face and Fight Camp Episode 2. So two new Wilder versus Ortiz big big content coming out. The day and the time of Canelo versus uh, um, Kovalev and UFC 244. So, of course, I'm going to be here with highlights and clips of it all. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. And we got about another maybe 10, 20 fucking Wilder Ortiz videos to get out from here until after the week of the fight. It's going to likely be upwards to 20. So, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Fight week streams, fight night stream. Please subscribe. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live.